Next is question number 41. So in question 41, we are given a needle is placed 45 centimeter from the lens. So object distance is given as 45 centimeter and we know that object distance is always a negative. So minus 45, write it properly. So minus 45 centimeter and it forms an image on the screen which is placed 90 centimeter on the other side of the lens. So image distance is also given which is formed on the other side. So it is going to be positive 90 centimeters. Identify the type of lens and determine the focal length. So from the focal length only we can tell whether it is a convex lens or concave lens. If the focal length comes positive, it will be convex lens which is a converging lens. If focal length comes negative, it will be a concave lens which will be a diverging lens. So we can use thin lens formula over here. So 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u. So 1 upon 90 minus 1 upon u is minus 45. It will be 1 upon 90 plus 1 upon 45. You can just multiply and divide by 2. Take LCM. So 3 divided by 90. Okay, it's going to be 1 upon f, which is going to be equal to 1 upon 30. So f is going to be plus 30 centimeters. So if you see the focal length came positive over here, therefore the lens is converging or it is a convex lens. You can say it is a convex lens or a converging lens. The second question is what is the size of image? If the size of the needle is 5 cm, the so size of object is given to us as 5 cm. So we know the magnification formula is size of image divided by size of object which is equal to V upon U for a lens. So I can use this relation. So size of image is going to be equal to, okay, or I write substitute in this formula first, upon 5 cm is equal to V is given to us as 90 and u is given to us as minus 45. Make sure you substitute with the sign convention. Okay. So from here, the height of image, you take the phi on the other side, you'll get it as minus 10 centimeter. That means this is going to be an inverted image. Since it is inverted, it means it is a real image. Okay. And if you see the height of the object was 5, height of the image came 10. That means it is a magnified image. Okay. So you can see over here, that negative sign indicates that the image is real and inverted and it is also magnified. Let's do question number 42. A double convex lens made up of glass having a refractive index of 1.5 has both its surfaces with equal radii of curvature 20 cm each that means R1 and R2 it's a bi convex lens so R1 is going to be positive 20 cm R2 is going to be negative 20 cm an object having a height of 5 cm is placed at a distance of 10 centimeters. So minus 10 centimeters from the lens. Find the position, nature and size of the image. So object distance is provided to you. You have to find out the position of the image. That means image distance we have to find out V. So to use thin lens formula, we will require focal length over here. Radii of curvature is given. Refractive index is given. You can use the lens makers formula to find out the focal length. So 1 upon F is going to be N minus 1 into 1 upon R1 minus 1 upon R2. So N is 1.5 minus 1. 1 upon R1 is 20. Minus 1 upon R2 is minus 20. So once you solve this, you will get your answer as 1 upon 20. That means the focal length over here is going to be plus 20 centimeter. Now use this focal length, use this object distance and put it in the thin lens formula. So 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u. So 1 upon v from here is going to be equal to 1 upon f plus 1 upon u. So 1 upon 20 plus 1 upon minus 10. 
it is 1 upon 20 minus 1 upon 10 multiply multiplied by 2 this is going to be equal to minus 1 upon 20 so v is going to be minus 20 centimeter now see v came negative and we know that for a convex lens when v is negative the image distance is negative it is going to be a virtual and erect image at a distance of 20 centimeter on the same side as that of the object okay if your object was placed over here at 10 centimeter at 10 centimeter on this side the image is found over here on the same side at 10 centimeter okay that is why it is came it came negative and it is going to be a virtual and erect image that is what that is what that negative sign tells us if your v had come positive over here it would be a real and inverted image on the other side of the lens all right remember that okay so here now we have to state the nature so nature is uh, what we told we have to state the size of the image also so we can use the magnification formula m is equal to size of image upon size of object which is equal to v upon u so i can use this relation so size of image is going to be equal to v upon u multiplied by h naught so v is minus 20 u is minus 10 multiplied by height of the object is 5 centimeters okay so here it is going to be 2 za so 10 centimeters so if you see the image is magnified okay because it is 10 and object was 5 centimeters so you can say you can tell them that the position they have asked us position right so position of the image is going to be 20 centimeter from the lens you can say from the lens on the same side as that of object okay then nature of the image it is going to be virtual erect okay and it is going to be magnified and size of the image you have already found out over here okay that is 10 centimeter this is going to be size of image so this is the extra question we are doing okay so you can note this down in your notebook so this figure is provided to us and the question is in the following ray diagram are given the position of object O so if you see object is at a distance of 40 centimeter from this convex lens okay and the image I and the two lenses L1 and L2 the first lens is given as L1 and this is L2 the focal length of L1 is also given that is 15 centimeter the image is formed the image is formed the final image is formed over here at I and the image of this convex lens the first lens is formed at this point let me call it as I1 at this point it is formed at I1 okay so we have to find out the focal length of the second lens so let me call this as f1 and the focal length of second lens that is concave lens i'll have to find out so what i will do over here is i'll apply the thin lens formula for the first convex lens i know the object distance i know where the image is formed by this convex lens only if this concave lens was not present over here this would be forming an image at I1. So I have, I, I, I'll have to find out this image distance. I know the position that is I1 over here. Focal length also I have. Okay, so you can use the thin lens formula. So I'll say for convex lens, for the convex lens, the image distance is negative. So minus 40 centimeter. Focal length of convex lens is positive. So plus 15 centimeter. V I can find out from here. So 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u. So 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon f plus 1 upon u. Okay, so from here I'll get 1 upon 15 plus 1 upon minus 40. So from here I can get v is equal to plus 24 centimeter. That means this distance from here to here, from the lens to 
this image i1 formed by the convex lens this is going to be equal to 24 centimeters okay now this image which is formed by the convex lens is going to act like a object for a second lens that is concave lens okay so i1 is going to be the object for this concave lens and the final image will be formed by the concave lens at i okay so we can find out easily now the object distance that is the distance from the concave lens that is distance from here to here will be what it is going to be this 24 minus this 14 it is going to give you 10 centimeter which is going to be the distance from the concave lens to i1 which is going to be your object distance image distance final image is formed at 30 centimeter so v is going to be 30 and you can find out the focal length using thin lens formula okay so now on this side i will write so for concave lens for concave lens we know that i dash this is i'm just writing for your reference i dash formed by convex lens serves as object for concave lens okay so u over here is going to be 24 minus 14 positive it is going to be it is on the other side it is going to be 10 centimeter v is also positive over here because it is formed on the other side this side in the direction of incident ray so plus 30 centimeter so f we can find out 1 upon v minus 1 upon u so 1 upon 30 minus 1 upon 10 okay that is going to be f from here is going to be or f2 from here is going to be since i had considered f2 as the focal length of concave lens it is going to be equal to minus 15 centimeters so this is going to be your focal length of concave lens question 43 the radius of curvature of each surface of a convex lens having a refractive index of 1.5 so it is a convex lens having a refractive index of 1.5 and radius of curvature of each surface that is r1 and r2 is going to be 40 centimeter so we know for a convex lens r1 is positive r2 is negative we have to calculate its power so remember power is given in diopters but the other measurement should be in si units so we'll have to convert r1 r2 in meters now we cannot keep it in centimeters this is going to be 0 0.4 meters positive is going to be minus 0 0.4 meters negative okay so here since this is provided we are not provided the focal length we can use the thin lens uh, lens makers formula that is power which is nothing but 1 upon f is equal to n minus 1 into 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 so n is 1.5 minus 1 into 1 upon r1 is 0 0.4 minus of minus 0 0.4 okay you solve this and you'll get the answer the power as 2.5 so this answer will come in diopters this is going to be in diopters okay question number 44 a double convex lens of plus 5 diopter so power is provided to us plus 5 diopters is made of glass having a refractive index of 1.5 with both its faces of equal radii so r1 and r2 are going to be plus r and minus r find the value of curvature so r we have to find out so power which is nothing but 1 upon f is equal to n minus 1 you have to write the formula okay minus 1 upon r2 so power is given as 5 diopters which is equal to 1.5 minus 1 1 upon r minus of minus 1 upon r okay so you can solve this this will be equal to 0 0.5 1 upon r plus 1 upon r will be 2 upon r is equal to 5. So, r is going to be equal to 0 0.5 multiplied by 2 divided by 5. Okay. So, this is going to be equal to 1 upon 5 meters which can be written as 20 centimeters. So, radii of curvature 
of either of the spherical surfaces is going to be 20 centimeter. So according to 45th question, two thin lenses of focal length 10 centimeter, so plus 10 centimeter is given and minus 5 centimeter, so F2 is equal to minus 5 centimeters are kept in contact. What is the focal length and power of the combination? So plus 10 centimeter means 0 0.1 meter. I'm taking it in meters because it will be easier for me to find out power because power has to be found out in diopters and for diopters we have to substitute the focal length in meters okay and this is going to be equal to minus 0 0.05 meters so the combination of focal length will have the focal length 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 so 1 upon 0 0.1 plus 1 upon minus 0 0.05 okay so the focal length from here okay is going to come as equal to minus 1 upon 10 meters okay or you can even write this as minus 10 centimeters okay so now this is the focal length of combination second power of the combination is 1 upon focal length so 1 upon minus 1 upon 10 that is going to be minus 10 diopters is going to be the uh, power of the combination of these lenses. Question number 46. A converging lens of focal length 50 centimeter is placed coaxially in contact with another lens of unknown focal length. So first is the converging lens. So F1 will be positive because it is a converging lens, convex lens having a focal length of 50 centimeter and it is kept in combination with f2 which is unknown okay focal length if the combination behaves like diverging lens so if together it is behaving like a diverging lens that means concave lens having a focal length of 50 centimeter now since the combination is behaving like a diverging lens which is a concave lens the combination's focal length is going to be negative which is 50 centimeter find the power and the nature of the second lens so p2 we have to find out and nature of the second lens we have to find out all right so now to find out the power first of all we'll have to find out the focal length of the second lens so we know that 1 upon f is going to be equal to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 right so 1 upon minus 50 is equal to 1 upon plus 50 plus 1 upon f2 so 1 upon f2 is going to be equal to 1 upon minus 50 minus 1 upon 50 that is minus 2 upon 50 it is minus 1 upon 25 so f2 is going to be minus 25 centimeters okay it is going to be minus 25 centimeter which is minus 0 0.25 meters this is focal length of the second so if you see second lens is a diverging lens here because the focal length came negative it is a concave lens okay now you can find out the power of the second lens so 1 upon f2 it is going to be 1 upon minus 0 0.25 okay that is going to be equal to minus 4 diopters okay you have to always substitute the focal length in meters remember all right so this is question 46 Next question, question 47. Question number 47. Two lenses having a power of plus 15 diopter. Okay, by the way, they had asked for the nature of the second lens, right? So you have to specify over here. Okay, that the second lens is a diverging lens okay and the power you have found out okay that is what they had asked right so just specify that the second lens is a diverging lens or you can also say it is a concave lens no problem all right okay question 47 two lenses having power 15 diopters plus 15 and p2 is given as minus 5 diopters okay are in contact with each other forming a combination of lens what is the focal length of this combination 
okay so first of all let us find out the power of the combination that is p1 plus p2 then we can find out the focal length so p1 is 15 p2 is minus 5 so 10 diopters is the power of the combination now focal length will be 1 upon power in diopters so 1 upon 10 that means it is going to be 0 0.1 meter which is 10 centimeters so power of the uh, the focal length of the combination is going to be 10 centimeter okay the second part the object size is given to us h naught is given 3 centimeters it is placed at 30 centimeter from this combination so object is placed at 30 centimeter from the combination object distance always negative calculate the position that means v we have to find out image distance and size of the image form so to find out the image distance we can use thin lens formula 1 upon v minus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f so 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon f plus 1 upon u so 1 upon f focal length of the combination is 10 together it is behaving like a converging lens convex lens positive focal length plus 1 upon minus 30 that is going to be 1 upon 15 so v will be equal to plus 15 centimeters okay so it is going to form the image which is having uh, which is having an image distance of 15 centimeter all right and since this image distance have come positive and it is behaving the combination is behaving like a converging lens a convex lens right so your image is going to be real and inverted because v is positive right okay so that we know we have to also find out the size of the image so size of the image magnification is given by size of image divided by size of object which is equal to v upon u so i'll use this combination over here okay so size of image is going to be v upon u multiplied by size of object v is 15 u is minus 13 height of the object is 3 centimeters so 10 so minus 10 so 15 upon minus 10 is going to be minus 1.5 centimeters that means if you see the object height is the greater than the image height right so image is diminished in this case okay so you can state the nature it is real inverted okay you can see from here also minus height of the image came negative that means it is downwards okay perpendicular to the principal axis downwards so it is inverted so real inverted okay and uh, is formed and is formed at 15 centimeter on the other side of combination because it came positive right so it is formed on the other side of the combination so the next set of questions is based on the refraction and dispersion of light through a prism so these are the various formulae uh, related to it okay so we'll start with the questions now so we'll go for question number 48 question number 48 okay so calculate the refractive index of material of a equilateral prism so we are told that it is an equilateral prism that means the angle of prism is going to be 60 degrees for which the angle of minimum deviation angle of minimum deviation is given to us as 60 degrees okay so direct formula it is the refractive index here it is so sine of this formula you can write down i would i will substitute directly so a is 60 dm is also 60 or delta m we can call it divided by 2 upon sine of 60 divided by 2 this is sine of 120 divided by 2 that is 60 divided by sine of 30 sine of 60 is root 3 upon 2 divided by half that will come on top okay so the answer over here is going to be equal to root 3 that is going to be the refractive index 1.732 is going to be the refractive index okay this is question 48 next we'll go for question 49 Question 49, a ray of light passes through 
an equilateral grass prism so again angle of prism over here is given as 60 degrees such that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of emergence so this is the condition of minimum deviation if the angle of emergence is three fourth of the angle of prism three four times the angle of prism that means three fourth of 60 degrees which is going to be equal to nothing but 45 degrees okay and the same will be angle of incidence because i is equal to e okay so we have to find out the angle of deviation so we know that a plus delta is equal to i plus e that is the condition which is given to us is is condition of minimum deviation so from here we can also write that a plus delta m is equal to i plus i because at the condition of minimum deviation i becomes equal to e that is what is given to us okay so i can write it as same 2i okay so from here dm is going to be 2i minus a so 2i is 2 into 45 minus a is 60 so 90 minus 60 is going to be equal to 30 degrees is the angle of deviation or angle of minimum deviation all right and we have to also find out the refractive index so in the second part the refractive index i'll use the same formula okay the same formula so sine of a is 60 plus dm is 30 that we just now found out divided by 2 upon sine of 60 upon 2 so this is going to be 90 upon 2 so sine of 45 divided by sine of 30 that is going to be 1 upon root 2 divided by 1 upon 2 okay which is going to be root 2 which will be equal to 1.414 this is going to be the answer next is question number 50 a ray of light passing through an equilateral triangular prism so angle of prism is 50 oh uh, sorry 60 degrees equilateral triangular prism uh, from air undergoes a minimum deviation so there is a condition of minimum deviation over here when angle of incidence becomes equal to 3 fourth of the angle of prism that is 3 fourth of 60 degrees which is 45 degrees so angle of incidence is given to us as 45 calculate the speed of light in the prism so so here to find out the uh, speed of light inside the prism okay what we will have to do is first we need to know the refractive index so that we can use the formula the refractive index of prism is going to be equal to speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in the prism so v will be equal to c upon n so n we can find out easily from here from the given data okay we can use snell's law over here simply the snell's law because angle of incidence we know angle of refraction we can find out because the condition of uh, uh, minimum deviation is given to us so at the condition of minimum deviation we know that r that is angle of refraction is angle of prism divided by 2 so angle of prism is 60 divided by 2 that is 30 degrees so you can find out n now that is sine of i divided by sine of r so angle of incidence is 45 angle of refraction is 30 okay so from here this is going to be 1 upon root 2 upon half so into 2 that is going to be equal to root 2 after rationalizing so mu comes equal to root 2 so now we know that n is equal to speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in medium so speed of light in medium is c upon n so c is 3 into 10 raised to 8 divided by root 2 1 upon root 2 value is 0 0.707 into 3 into 10 raised to 8 okay so this is going to be equal to 2.12 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second this is going to be the speed of light inside the prism this is question 50. next we'll go for question 51 Question 51. A ray of light incident on the face of an equilateral prism. Okay, so prism over here again is equilateral. Shows a minimum deviation. Angle of minimum deviation is provided. 30 degrees. Calculate the speed of light through prism. 
So here also you can do the same thing. You can find out the refractive index first and then you can find out the, you can use the formula refractive index is equal to C upon V. Okay. So A is given to you, DM is given the condition of minimum deviation. So N will be equal to the same formula sign. This formula you can utilize. A is 60 plus DM is 30 divided by 2 divided by sine of 60 upon 2. So 60 plus 230, this is going to be same thing, sine of 45 divided by sine of 30, exactly same thing. So root 2, so again it is going to be n is equal to c upon v, v is equal to c upon n. So 3 into 10 raised to 8 divided by, divided by its n, so root 2. So answer is also going to be same, 2.12 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second. Little bit different from the previous problem little bit different okay so this is going to be your answer question number 51 this is the question 52 calculate the value of angle of incidence so we have to find out this angle of i angle of incidence when a ray of light is incident on one face of an equilateral glass prism so a is given to us as 60 degrees produces an emergent ray which just grazes along the adjacent face. So it is grazing. So angle of emergence is 90 degrees over here. Correct? The refractive index of the glass prism is given as root 2. Okay? We have to find out angle of I. So what I will do? I will apply the Snell's law on the face AC first. I will find out what is R2. I will find out what is R2. Okay, and I know the relation, right? R1 plus R2 is nothing but the angle of prism. From there, I'll find out R1. And using Snell's law on the interface AB, I'll, I'll find out I. Because I'll be having R1. Okay, so let's do it step by step. So first step is to find out R2. So I'll apply the Snell's law for AC. So applying Snell's law, okay, for interface AC okay so see over here sign of angle of incidence so angle of incidence over here is R2 divided by sign of angle of refraction over here is E is the refractive index of second medium so I'll put it as N1 and N2 so refractive index of second medium is outside medium so N1 divided by N2 which is N12 okay so sin of r2 is unknown to us keep it as it is sin of e is 90 is equal to refractive index of air is 1 refractive index of glass is given as root 2 so sin of r2 is going to be 1 upon root 2 into sin of 90 is going to be equal to 1 right so sin of r2 is equal to 1 upon root 2 so r2 is going to be sin inverse of 1 upon root 2 which is nothing but 45 degrees so r2 is nothing but 45 degrees so we know that in a prism in a prism we know that r1 plus r2 is equal to angle of prism so r1 will be equal to angle of prism minus r2 that is going to be equal to angle of prism is 60 over here r2 is 45 so this is going to be equal to 15 degrees r1 will come as 15 degrees now what i will do over here is I'll apply the Snell's law to the interface AB. Okay, so applying Snell's law to interface AB. Okay, what do we get? What we will get over here? It is going to be sine of angle of incidence divided by sine of angle of refraction now is R1 is going to be the refractive index of second medium N2 divided by N1. So sin of I divided by sin of R1, I found out over here 15 is equal to refractive index of second medium is root 2 divided by 1. So sin of I is equal to root 2 into sin of 15. Now we don't know the value of sin 15, keep it as it is, no problem. So I will be equal to sin inverse of root 2 sin 15 if it is given to you the value is given to you substitute otherwise you can keep it like this only 15 degrees okay 
degrees all right so this is going to be your angle of incidence question 53 this set of questions the next three questions are based on the defects in the vision there is myopia hypermetropia okay so the first question that is question 53 what focal length should be should the reading spectacles have for a person for whom the least distance of distinct vision is 50 centimeter so this person is uh, hypermetropic his eye is hypermetropic that is he cannot see nearby object but he can see far away object so his least distance of distinct vision is 50 centimeter if you hold the object beyond 50 centimeter or uh, from the eye in between 50 centimeter to the eye he will not be able to see okay uh, so he is far uh, he is, is suffering from far sightedness that is hypermetropia okay so if the object is lying at the least distance of distinct vision so supposing the object is lying at 25 centimeter which is least distance of distinct vision let me Take it as minus because object distance the image should form at his least distance of distinct vision that is his least distance of distinct vision is 50 centimeter which is on the same side of the lens which is uh, negative again okay so we have to find out the focal length so you can use thin lens formula over here so 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u so 1 upon minus 50 minus of minus 1 upon 25 okay so here you will get it as 1 upon 50 okay which is the focal length is going to be plus 50 centimeter so that means positive sign of this focal length tells us that the corrective lens over here which should be used by him should be a convex lens or a converging lens having a focal length equal to 50 centimeter okay i hope you have understood this this is a person supposing this is his eye his least distance of distinct vision is 50 centimeter that means if the object is placed over here he won't be able to see if the object is placed over here he won't be able to see so if i place an object at let us say the least distinct uh, least distance of distinct vision for a normal eye that is 25 centimeter if i place the object at 25 centimeter the image should be formed over here this is object the image should be formed over here okay so for this what lens should be used over here a convex lens having focal length equal to 50 centimeter question number 54 a person wears glasses of power so he is wearing a glass of power minus 2.5 diopter is the person far sighted or near sighted so if you see the power of the lens used by him is negative that means he is using a concave lens a diverging lens and a concave lens is prescribed for a myopic person that is a person who is near sighted correct so this person is near sighted person is nearsighted this is what we know okay now what is the far point of a person without glasses now he cannot see this is the person who is myopic he cannot see far away object if the object is over here he cannot see this object so his object should be placed at the point which is called as the person's far point so he is far point is over here so after wearing these concave glasses if the object is lying at infinity then the image should be formed and the image should be formed at he is a far point far point of this person correct so the question is we have to find out this far point that means we have to find out v over here okay the far point of this person right so focal length of this lens which he is using we already know we have found out we can find out from here because we know the power right so what will be focal length focal length will be 1 upon power that is 1 upon minus 2.5 which is going to be equal to minus 40 centimeters okay this is going to be minus 40 centimeters so focal length we found out so focal length of this lens we have 
okay object is lying actually at infinity which he cannot see so using this lens it has to be found at his far point wherever he can see the farthest point he can see so that is going to be his far point so that is nothing but the image distance okay so we can use the thin lens formula over here 1 upon v minus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f so 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon f plus 1 upon u so 1 upon f is 1 upon minus 40 okay plus 1 upon object distance is infinity but it is going to be minus infinity okay it doesn't matter but to put it as minus infinity this term is going to go to 0 so v is going to be minus 1 upon 40 so his far point is minus 40 centimeter that means whatever is the object at infinity that object's virtual image will be formed at the far point that is at this point which is going to be 40 centimeter in front of him which is going to be his far point okay and that he will be easily able to see using that lens So you can write down the final statement that the far point of this eye is 40 centimeter from the lens. Question 55. The far point of a myopic person is 80 centimeter. So myopic means nearsighted. He can see nearby object. He cannot see far away object. Okay. So far point of this person. Okay. The, if the object is placed at infinity. If the object is placed at infinity, u is equal to minus infinity, then the image is formed at his far point. That means the image will be formed over here that is given as 80 centimeter is going to be v. So minus 80 centimeter is going to be his far point. Okay. What is the power of the lens required to enable him to see very distant object? So from this information which is given to us, first of all, we can find out the focal length. Okay, and then from the focal length, we can give them the power. So focal length 1 upon f is going to be 1 upon v minus 1 upon u. So 1 upon v is going to be minus 1 upon 80 minus 1 upon u is 1 upon minus infinity. This term will go to 0. So focal length over here is minus 80 centimeter, which is minus 0 0.8 meters. Right, this is going to be the focal length. Okay, now power is going to be equal to what? 1 upon focal length, which is given in meters. So 1 upon minus 0 0.8 meters, which is going to be minus 1.25 diopters. This is going to be the power of the lens which is given. So see, the power came negative, that means it is a concave lens. Automatically, it is related. Concave lens means it is myopic, the person is myopic. Okay. Next set of questions are based on the simple microscope. So question number 56. A thin convex lens having a focal length of 5 centimeters is used as a simple microscope by a person with normal near point at 25 centimeter. That means the image will be formed at 25 centimeter. What is the magnifying power of this microscope? So when the image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision, for a human eye that is 25 centimeter we know that the magnifying power is given by the formula 1 plus d upon f for a simple microscope so 1 plus d is 25 focal length of the lens is given as 5 so 1 plus 5 6 is going to be the magnifying power for this thin convex lens okay next question question 57 a simple microscope is a combination of two lenses in contact having a power of the two lenses is plus 15 diopters and p2 is given as plus 5 diopters calculate the magnifying power of microscope if the final image is formed at 25 centimeter from the eye so final image is formed at least distance of distinct vision so the power or the magnifying power is given by 1 plus d upon f so for that we require f right so we are given the two powers so let's combine these two powers so combination of power is p1 plus p2 15 plus 5 that is 20 diopters so power is 20 diopters okay so from here we can find out the focal length so focal length is going to be 1 upon power that is 1 upon 20 right meters okay which can be equal to 
5 centimeters. So I will put it over here. Focal length is uh, 1 plus D is going to be equal to uh, we have found uh, given that is 25 least distance of distinct vision and F is nothing but 5 centimeters. Okay, so here also you get the answer as 6. The magnifying power of the lens is going to be 6. Question 58. An object is to be seen through a simple microscope having power is equal to 10 diopters. Where should the object be placed? So object distance we have to find out so as to produce maximum angular magnification. So, we know that maximum angular magnification is produced when the image is produced at the least distance of distinct vision that is the D which is going to be equal to 25 centimeter but since it is formed on the uh, uh, left hand side of the lens that is uh, the distance will be measured opposite to the incident light it will be taken as negative. Okay. So, where the object should be placed so that we get the maximum angular magnification so, we know that maximum angular magnification is obtained when the image is formed at least distance of distinct vision. This is what we know, right? So, from here, we can find out, okay? So, what we can do? We can use the thin lens formula, but first we have to find out the focal length. So, we know that power is equal to 1 upon f or f is equal to 1 upon power that is 10. That is going to be equal to 10 centimeters. This will be in meters. So, 10 centimeters. So, you can use thin lens formula 1 upon V minus 1 upon U. 1 upon U will be equal to 1 upon V minus 1 upon F. So, 1 upon minus 25 minus 1 upon 10. Okay. So, this is going to be equal to minus 7 upon 50. So, U over here is going to be minus 50 upon 7. It is minus 7.1 centimeters. Okay. This is going to be where the object should be placed in order to get maximum angular uh, magnification. Question 59. A converging length having a focal length equal to 6.25 centimeter okay, is used as a magnifying glass. If the near point of the observer is 25 centimeter, that means the image should be formed at 25 centimeter, that is minus 25 centimeter from the eye, and the lens is held close to the eye calculate the distance of object. So, object distance is asked from the lens. Okay. So, we can use the thin lens formula. So, 1 upon u from here will be 1 upon v minus 1 upon f. It is 1 upon minus 25 minus 1 upon 6.25. Okay. So, from here we will get this as minus 1 upon 5. So, u will be minus 5 centimeters. And we have to find out the angular magnification also okay when the object when the image is formed at least distance of distinct vision so angular magnification is going to be 1 plus d upon f so 1 plus 25 upon f is 6.25 will be 1 plus 4 that is 5 okay the second question is find the angular magnification when final image is formed at infinity so we know when the image is formed at infinity the angular magnification is given by the formula d upon f so that will be equal to 25 upon 6.25 that will be equal to 4 okay this is this is when the image is formed at infinity okay this is when image is formed at least distance of distinct vision that is capital D Next question, question number 60. A compound microscope with an objective of 1 centimeter focal length. So, focal length of objective is 1 centimeter and the eyepiece of 2 centimeter. So, focal length of eyepiece is 2 centimeter. Has a tube length. So, L is given as 20 centimeter. Calculate the magnifying power of the microscope if the final image is formed at the near point of the eye. So, we know that when final image is formed at the near point of the eye, the magnification is given by L upon F naught into 1 plus D upon Fe. So, L is 20 divided by F naught is 1 to 1 plus D is that is least distance of distinct vision 25 divided by the focal length of eyepiece is 2. So, after you solve this, you will get the answer magnification as 270. 
question 61 you are given two converging lenses of focal length 1.25 cm and 5 cm so it's a compound microscope to design a compound microscope so the smaller one is going to be focal length of objective and the bigger one is going to be the focal length of eyepiece it is desired to have a magnification of 30 find out the separation between objective and eyepiece that means l is asked the tube length is asked so the formula is m is equal to l upon f naught into 1 plus d upon f e so this is for normal adjustment so l is what we have to find out f naught is 1.25 1 plus d is 25 divided by f e is 5 and magnification is given as 30 so from here l will be 6.25 centimeters this is going to be your answer question number 62 you can try on your own we'll do question number 63 last one the magnifying power of astronomical telescope in a normal adjustment position is 100 so m is given as 100 in the normal adjustment so in the normal adjustment we know that f naught plus f e is going to be equal to the tube length correct so l that is what we know and the magnification of telescope is given by f naught or f o that is focal length of objective divided by focal length of eyepiece so f o upon f e is given as 100 i'll call that equation 1 okay and the distance between objective and eyepiece is given as 101 that is tube length is given as 101 that means f naught or f o objective plus f e is given as 101 this is my equation 2 so from equation 1 i can say that f o is going to be 100 f e and i substitute it over here so 100 f e plus f e is going to be 101 so 101 f e is going to be 101 so f e is going to be 1 centimeter so automatically f objective is going to be 100 centimeters so therefore the focal length of eyepiece is 1 centimeter and that of the objective is 100 centimeters